for your fresh anointing, for your fresh power. Thank you for your fresh presence today. Have your lovely way. Have your lovely way. Praise God. Wow, it feels wonderful to be in the Lord's house. There's no place like his presence, and we're glad to be in his presence today. Thank God. It is good to have Linda here today, a guest with Sister Cheryl, and so we appreciate her being with us today to worship the Lord with us. Praise God. Thank God. And it's good to have Brother Bill and Sister Sarah here today. They had a tragedy. They lost a grandson. So I know that their hearts are heavy today, but we're glad that they were able to be here today. And also, um, Sister Mark and Tell's sister-in-law is recovering from a surgery, having complications, and her name's Teresa. I wanted to pray, and I wanted to pray for Brother Bill and Sister Sarah. Let's just take them to the Lord right now and just, I uh, you know the needs there, and let's pray that you'll touch Teresa, help her healing to begin to be good, uh, help her uh, to be able to get a quick healing now. We pray for Brother Bill and Sister Sarah, that you comfort them, give them strength, and give them help. We ask your blessings to be upon them in a very meaningful way. We thank you for it in <clears throat> Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank God. Let's all stand. We're going to read the word of the Lord and go to the word of the Lord today. Again, we want to say thank you for coming. Be a part of this special day in Lee Allen's life as well as um, just whatever God has planned for us today. Psalm 62 and verse number 5. My soul waiteth thou only upon thee, for my expectation is from him. And then he only is my rock and salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Thank God. The psalmist David uh, was saying that I have an expectation that God will be able to do everything. He'll be my salvation. He'll be my defense. Thank God. And I will not be moved. Praise God. And then Luke chapter 3 and verse number 15 says, and the people were in expectation and all the men measured in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. Thank God. And so I want to preach today from this thought, the power of expectation, the power of expectation. Let's just go to God. Lord, we are expecting you. We know you can do above and beyond what we could even ask, think, or imagine. And so pray for your anointing. Pray for your help today. Let something beautiful happen before we walk out of these doors this morning, and we ask it in Jesus' name. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank God. Thank you for being here today. What this verse uh, in Luke is saying is that the people were in expectation, expecting the Messiah. They were expecting the Christ to come. And John was giving them a hope that he may be the one because it had been 400 years of silence from the Old Testament to the New Testament. No prophet with fresh anointing, no fresh word from God. And suddenly John burst on the scene with this message that was so fresh. Thank God, a fresh word from God. His message was, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Thank God. And hundreds came to be baptized of John. And matter of fact, his powerful preaching was so amazing. And he was such a transformed voice. Thank God. And the people began to wonder, well, maybe this is the Christ. Thank God. One translation says that the people were on their tiptoes with expectation. After 400 years of silence, suddenly they got to hear a fresh word from the Lord. And it is amazing that they were still holding on to a promise, a promise that was made all through the Old Testament. Some of the promises 700 years before in Isaiah that unto us a child is born and unto us a son is going to be given. And they held on to those promises that one day Messiah is coming. One day he's going to come and set up a kingdom and where they look for that. And so they were still full of expectation that the promise of the Messiah was going to come. Thank God. As the Old Testament had prophesied to them. And so uh, there was a power in their expectation. It's good to believe that something good is going to happen to you in your life. Matter of fact, um, the old song uh, says it very well. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I kind of feel that way about this morning. I just feel like something good is about to happen. Thank God. But if you will live with a positive mindset, good things will come to you. It is amazing how that, um, you know, what we think about many times is what comes to us. And so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so if you will, you all probably know people that are negative mindsets. Everything's bad and getting worse. And it just seems like they live in with a cloud over their head. 
But you met other people that look like the sun's always shining in their life because they live with a positive mindset. And I made up my mind a long time ago that I'd rather have the sun shining, praise God, than I had dark clouds hanging over my head. And I have the right to choose. Thank God I can choose what's going to day I'm going to have. Thank God. It doesn't matter if things don't go just like I want them to. Thank God I can still plan for them to go better. Praise God. I'm always going to be looking for the good side and not the bad side. I'm always going to be looking for hope and not defeat. And I believe that it, it pays off in a long run. Now, John had to tell them, you know, I am not the one that you're looking for. Praise God. But thank God I'm baptizing you unto repentance. But there is one coming. And he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Thank God. And what John was saying is, is uh, hanging uh, in uh, there because the Messiah is going to come. Don't lose hope. Matter of fact, he said he is already in your midst. Thank God. And it won't be long until I'm going to be decreasing and he's going to be increasing. Thank God. And in his kingdom, thank God, there is going to be so much different. Thank God. There will, when the Messiah comes, things will start happening. Thank God. The blind will see, the lame will walk, the dumb will talk. Thank God. I'm telling you, the day is coming. And so I've come to remind you that why uh, we should be filled with expectation every time we come to the house of God. Because the Bible is full of promises that every one of us, thank God, can build on, that we can live with an anticipation. Thank God that Bible prophecy is being fulfilled before our eyes. Thank God we are the people, thank God, of whom the end of the world has come. And of course, to the sinner, that sounds bad. But to the child of God, that sounds really good. Thank God it lets me know that it won't be long. Thank God that expectancy is in my heart that I'm expecting good things because he has promised, thank God, that in the last days, thank God, some wonderful promises are going to be fulfilled. Praise God. There is that promise that the latter rain is going to be greater than the former rain. Thank God. The promise is like that with his stripes we are healed. Thank God that you can, uh, you know, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The promise that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The promise that in my name, thank God, there's going to be power to break every chain that Satan and has people bound with. And so today, thank God, we can look at the word of the Lord, over 1,100 promises that are for us today. Thank God. Plus, we have the, the privilege of prayer. Thank God that any time I want to, I can call on the Lord and he will hear. I don't have to wait for someone to pray for me. I don't have to wait for someone to go into the mercy seat for me. But any time, the power, the privilege of prayer is such a wonderful thing. That is whatsoever you desire when you pray. You can just start asking God and knowing that he is able to give you what is good and acceptable for you. Look, church, it's time to let God work. Really, the Bible one place says God will work who will let him. Thank God God wants to work. He wants to do awesome things in your life, but you have to allow it. You have to will it. You have to desire it. Praise God. You can live oppressed and depressed, or you can live looking up and believing that somewhere God help is on the way. Somewhere this is all going to be a bad dream. Somewhere it's going to pass. Thank God. And I want to remind you that the power of expectation, if you can expect it, God can do it. And so sometimes it's just the enduring of our faith that is so uh, and precious in being, bringing about the blessings that God has prepared for us because God has prepared some wonderful things for us. And somewhere we just have to understand that he's just waiting for me to claim those things, that power of expectation, the power of just saying, I believe it, and so it's going to be done in God's time, in God's way. And so today, I don't know where your struggles are at. I don't know what you're battling today, but I can assure you that if you'll take it to God, if you'll begin to believe that God, somewhere you're going to turn darkness into light. Thank God you're going to take the bitter waters and make them sweet. You're going to take uh, hard places and make them smooth places that you can smooth out the place. You can make a way for us. There's a story in the Bible about the power of expectation in the book of Acts. And it kind of reads like this. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb they carried whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple which called a beautiful asking alms of them that entered in. Well, the lame man, it was just another day. Every day, friends would bring him, set him at the gate, beautiful, and there he would sit and he would, he would make uh, his appeal for someone to give him alms. Thank God, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms of them. And this was the, the way that it worked. You know, every time someone began to approach him, 
he would begin to put his cup out and ask him for alms. And of course, you know, um, just like many of times we do when we see panhandles on the uh, side of the road and there's that stop sign there and uh, they're uh, needing help, praise God. You know, I try to always have a dollar or two prepared and as often as I can, I try to just reach out and, and give them a dollar. Thank God it doesn't work every time because sometimes, you know, it's just not the, the way that you feel like, well, I don't want to put them out in the street or whatever. But, but I like to try to be mindful of that person. And, and a lot of times someone says, well, they're just going to go get some alcohol. Thank God, you know what, that's not my problem. Thank my problem is is to care. Thank God their problem is is to handle it in a, in a right way. But if they don't, so be it. But I'm just wanting to understand that I want to have compassion where that uh, someday I may need compassion. And so anyway, um, you know, every day when someone came towards there, he would ask an alm of them. Of course, some people would look the other way. Thank God some people would say, well, not today. But there he sat. Thank God. As Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Thank God. Now, that was always a good sign. Praise God. When somebody was willing to look at you, he felt like, well, this may be a good thing. And so he gets expectation. The Bible says, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Thank God. Every miracle starts with an expectation. Every time God wants to do something for you, he's waiting for you to start expecting it. He's waiting for you to start believing it. Thank God. The lame man was expecting to receive something from them. Thank God. It's what the psalmist was saying, my expectation comes from God. Thank God. I believe that God is going to do what he said he would do. And so I expect him to do what he promised that he would do. Thank God. Look, God will back up his word. And so if you can just have enough faith, thank God, to believe that God is able to back up his word. You know, sometimes we're trying to have faith. Praise God. We say, I don't, have, I don't know if I have enough faith. You don't have to have a lot of faith. You just got to have faith that God can do what he said he can do. Praise God. It's not your faith. It's faith in what God can do. And somewhere we get uh, so bogged down with how little faith we have and how hard it is to believe. But sometimes what you really got to do is just believe that what God promised in his word, that is what he's willing to back up. Thank God. And so the psalmist said, you know, he is my rock. Thank God I can stand on his promises. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Thank God the old son got it right um, if you believe you shall receive and I believe that's the best way to approach God is just believing that he can do they can look God will always back up his word so I'm up for if you can just have enough faith to believe that he can do that so don't um, have to feel it you know sometimes people wait for a feeling but I'm telling you God can just do it without you feeling anything. Expectation is looking forward for something to happen. Expectations let you enjoy something before it happens. Just like um, some of my most enjoyable times is planning a vacation. Thank God, planning to go somewhere. And, I, you know, when you plan something, everything's perfect. Thank God, there's never a flat tire. There's never uh, any problems. Everything just goes beautifully. Thank God. And so in my expectations, I get to enjoy uh, that wonderful trip before I ever make it. But then, you know, obviously when you make the trip, sometimes it doesn't quite get as good as you expected it to be, but I got to enjoy it. Thank God. It's like expecting a new baby to come. Praise God. You know, everybody's so excited and things until, you know, the baby comes and you're up all night and they're crying and, you know, you're walking the floors and you're saying, well, was I really excited as I thought it was about this? But, you know, it is joy and we all know that's joy. But there is some pain that goes with it. But you get to enjoy the baby before it gets here. And, and there is things that God has promised us. Expectation is looking forward to something happening. Thank God. Expectation lets you enjoy something before it happens. Thank God. It hasn't happened, but I know it's going to happen. I have that confidence. And that is the wonderful thing, the power of expectation. Expecting it ca that causes uh, the little woman that had the issue of blood uh, sitting in her backyard and someone said Jesus is going to be in town uh, today and she made up her mind that with an expectation she had that expectation if I can just get through the crowd if I can just touch the hem of his garment I know that I'll be made whole and that expectation drove her there's something about expectation it gives you power to to do things that you wouldn't normally do because you say but but I want to reach the goal I want the prize and so I endure things I pressed for things because I know that thank God I can be made whole they got expectation caused the blind man on the side of the road to begin to cry out even though it was embarrassing those around him but he didn't care because he just wanted to get the attention of the master 
I wonder if this morning there's someone here that uh, can came expecting God to do something for them, expecting God to work like He said He could work. Look, if you can uh, be you can be healed today, thank God. You can be delivered today. You can be forgiven today, thank God, because God is a present help in time of trouble. Praise God, Hallelujah! God has promises. Thank God, you know, God has promised that he will show up, thank God, and do what he said he would do. Thank God, that is, if set free, that is break chains, thank God. It doesn't, uh, anyone here today, thank God, can come and God can begin to do according to your expectation. Does anyone here today really understand that God can heal me today, that God can forgive me today, that God can deliver me today. I don't have to wait for two or three months. Thank God, I don't have to go through rehab. God can really reach down where I'm at, and he can deliver and set free. He really can. Let's give him praise for what we know he can do today. Praise God. We know you can do that today. Thank God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. You know, if we will expect it, God will show up, and he will show out as only God can show out. Thank God. And so the question is, have you uh, experienced God? Because it's not enough to know about God. All of us here today, we know about God. But the, there's something greater than knowing about God, and that's experiencing God. Thank God. Do you have an experience with God? Do you have something inside you today that lets you know that I'm ready for the rapture. I'm ready for when Jesus comes. When Peter told the lame man to, to look on us, thank God, he was expecting to receive something of them. And his hopes may have dropped a little bit when Peter began to say, silver and gold have I none. Thank God. Wait a minute. Thank God. I, but I've got something better than that. Thank God. Then Peter said unto them, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Thank God. And suddenly he uh, reached forth his hand, thank God, and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Thank God, hey, I'm talking about a God that can do with whatever you have need of him to do. The power, praise God, the power of just expecting something today. The power of just believing that he will help me today. What would happen today if you would uh, start just expecting God to come on the scene and touch you in a way that only God can touch you and say, be it unto you according to your faith. I'm thankful for what God does when we begin to trust him, when we begin to believe in him and say, thank God, be it unto you according to your faith. Expectation is believing that God would do what he said he would do. Expectation would give you uh, a, a transformation. Thank God. That's what happens when uh, you make your way to an old-fashioned altar and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. You completely are changed. Thank God, sometimes we look at others and we just think, well, I could never live that way. But the truth of the matter is, is you haven't been transformed because when you get transformed, thank God, you're not the same anymore. You become different. You get a new heart. You get a new desire. You get new desires and you get new loves. Thank God, the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for or the things that you are expecting. That is what faith is. It is expectation. Thank God. Now today, thank God, you may not have come here expecting God to do anything special for you. Thank God. Just like the lame man that was brought to that temple gate every day. He was not expecting anything more than hoping that maybe some generous person would come by and give him a little something in his cup. But what I'm trying to do today is to get you to change your mind and start expecting God to heal you. Start expecting God to deliver you. Start expecting God to help lift that load of sin that you walked in here with and understand that God can lift the load. I don't have to leave here the way that I came. Look, you can cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. He really is mindful of what brought you here today. Thank God. When, when Jesus went to uh, the tomb of Lazarus, they thought that Jesus had gone there but to uh, grieve over his friend that had passed away. But what Jesus really went there was, he went there expecting to raise the dead. That was his purpose, thank God. And today, the Lord has come here expecting to do something very special for you today. You may not have thought it. You may be like um, Martha and Mary and saying, Lord, you're too late. Thank God you don't understand. Thank God by now he stinketh. It's going to be embarrassing if you make us roll that stone away. But somewhere Jesus was giving them an offer. He was just saying, all I want you to do is roll the stone away. 
You don't have to worry about anything else. Just get all the doubt out of the way. Get all the fears out of the way. And just let me work. Thank God. And I think there's someone here today, if you just understood, when you start having all your doubts and fears and all the reasons why you can't make a move for God, all the reasons that I can't live for God, I'm telling you what the Lord is saying. Just just roll the stone away. Thank God. Just give me a chance to touch your life. Just give me a chance to make a difference in your life. Thank God. Praise God. While we're standing today, Jesus said, thank God, roll the stone away. Thank God. And you're going to have a miracle. And here today, I don't know what stones are in your way. I don't know what would keep you from reaching out to God. I don't know what would keep you from bringing your hurts and your needs and your situation to God. Thank God. But I can tell you, it's a stone. And if you'll roll that stone out of the way, and if you'll just make up your mind, I don't care what the devil says. I don't care about all the obstacles. Thank God. I'm going to just step out and just say, God, whatever you will. Thank God. You may have to come here. Uh, you may have come here today not expecting anything special to happen, but Jesus has showed up, thank God, and he is saying unto everyone, thank God, that will believe. If you will ask, thank God, if you will take th that step of faith, if you will reach out and touch me, I can give you a miracle because Jesus has showed up today, thank God, to save the lost, to heal the sick, thank God, to meet every need in this building. There's not a need that's in this building today that God cannot reach down and meet that need. So... Thank God. It's up to you. It's in your hands now. You have to decide, am I going to roll the stone away? Thank God. Am I going to take that step of faith? Am I going to reach out and touch him? Thank God. If you will, God will do above and beyond what you could even ask, think, or imagine. I know that you know that God is great, but I'm telling you, he can do above and beyond whatever you can ask, think, or imagine. While we're singing today, thank God. I wonder if there's any that would like to just come forward. Let us pray with you. Thank God.